Okay, it's the top of the hour, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, gather us in, get us all started. Um, welcome to the Alume COVID-19 Preparation and Planning. It's our town hall. Um, I think we'll probably be doing these at least weekly. That's my intention um, throughout the next few weeks and um, as, we, as we deal with this pandemic. Um, I just want to take a moment and acknowledge you. This is, I know this is a really, um, you know, it's a, it's a crazy time. And you all are out in the field and at the front lines. And it is just extraordinary. Um, and I think for a lot of people, this, this situation is becoming more and more real. And, um, so as the, as time goes on, I hope that uh, you know we all become more united together. We use this as an opportunity to rise and uh, be a part of a solution that Connecticut needs. Uh, take care of ourselves, take care of our families, take care of our neighbors and our community. Um, I do believe that our local government is doing the right thing to restrict travel and to keep people home. I think that very important that we all, especially us as healthcare workers, really aim to, to set a very high bar uh, for ourselves and even for our families to restrict our exposure so that we can, um, can go out and serve as best we can. Um, and we are going to do the best we can, as we'll talk about today. Alume is doing everything we can possibly do to set you up for safety. And um, we want to make sure that you feel safe and that you have the tools you need. Um, that said, it's not a perfect situation. Um, we are not alone in that we're all right now struggling to get enough supplies. And uh, Christine Schmidlin and Kelly Daly and Marie Pescator have been working really hard night and day to, uh, to get everything that we need in order for us to feel confident and safe, uh, protecting you and protecting your patients. Um, but you'll, you know, I, I've been in touch with um, members of the healthcare world down in New York City and, um, you know, their, their walls are full and they're overflowing and they don't have enough um, protective e equipment. So, so we are going to need to make do, and we are going to uh, need to rise above and be creative. Um, and it's just, it's just, it's just extremely important that we're all on the same page and really focus on taking care of each other. So we're going to talk about some things. Um, some will be a repeat for last time, but a lot of it I just really want to. There's some new things I want to make sure you have in your hands. Uh, we have some activities that are important, new processes that we put into place. Uh, again, it's to help uh, support and protect you and your patients. We're going to go through what those are, the staff screening form, the team questionnaire, um, the four questions. We moved those from three questions to four for the advice of, um, of our local or our Connecticut association. Um, the practice, a couple practices we talked about that really want to make sure you're doing. You're not just thinking about it. It's not just something we're talking about, what you're actually doing. The, the, the washing of hands, the cleaning and disinfecting. We talk about protective equipment um, and uh, individualized emergency plans for each patient that need to be in place, and um, the importance for limited physical contact with other employees and our office hours. So, as I said before, we have um, on the call last week, it was, I believe, we have the power to make a huge difference in our communities. and. This is why we're here. We're here as healthcare workers. The company was built in order to take care of individuals, vulnerable populations in the in the field. And so this is our moment. And so it's our opportunity to be uh, to be those that can can make the biggest difference. Um, I really feel like you know home health is the infantry of this battle that we're fighting. You guys are the foot soldiers. You're the ones out there. And um, it's, it's really in, incredibly brave and valuable work. And um, we, we are here to support you in every way we can. So our goal is to impl implement safety precautions so all patients are um, safe and so that all of you are, not, are safe and no one is infected. 
Um, there's no reason, there's no purpose in panic. We want to continue to stay very focused on the actions we can take, and those are the things we're going to talk about today. And, um, and it's hard, right? All of us are stuck in our houses with our kids and and it's um, and our husbands who we love, and um, and it's hard. It's psychologically hard, right? The uncertainty in the financial markets, the uncertainty in unemployment, um, just the pressure of not being able to get out and go to a movie or pick up dinner or um, see friends, right, in person. The the, the stress of that is enormous. And each of us is going to go through ups and downs with that. And um, I just want to personally say thank you for also being on the front line on top of all of that and, and extend myself to you uh, to give you any kind of support we can. We will try to be uh, putting out positive messages as well. It's important for you to take in those positive messages. It's important for you to take time for yourself. It's important to um, get plenty of rest. Uh, exercise, have a routine, you know, um, been working over the last few days with my own family and getting up, getting, you know, getting on the treadmill, um, getting outside the house every day. Sometimes you get like in a slump and you want to stay in, but it's important to just get up and get out of the house, go for a walk, take your dogs out if you have dogs, uh, take your kids out. Um, you know, I, we've been having uh, little happy hours with our, with our friends. We, we set up and, you know, do FaceTime or Zoom or uh, somebody gave me one last night. We did, uh, uh, I don't remember what it's called, something, party, something. And, and it's important that we, all, that we all do this. We all have, have ways to connect and relieve our souls of the burdens that we're feeling right now. And um, I know I'm feeling it. I know that uh, yesterday I had a pretty down day and I, um, I feel the enormous responsibility of all of you and our patients and, um, you know, making sure we all stay afloat. So, um, so just keep, keep, you know, reaching out to all of us and let us know how we can be of support to you. So again, our biggest risk to our patients is really the people who come into contact with them. And we are one of the people, you know, the groups of people that, get in that are in touch with them. So their care teams, their family members, and other people that come and go from their home. Hopefully at this point, most families are uh, at the point where they're not bringing in lots of other visitors. Um, if you are finding that that's not the case in the, in the home where you are working, please let us know so that we can try to help with that. If you notice that in, and this is speaking to the individualized emergency plans, we've been reaching out. And if you find that there's not adequate cleaning supplies, you find that there's not, you know, um, there's issues in the home that are contributing to infection, that there are people coming and going, um, please let us know. Uh, don't feel that you need to deal with that by yourself. Uh, let us let us get involved and uh, let the administrative team uh, be there to support you uh, through all of that. So one of the things we've implemented over the last couple of days, and you've been great at doing this, and we really, really appreciate it. We started a online form where you, it's the daily COVID-19 staff screening form. It's where you take your, you know, take your temperature, and uh, you report various things. And so it's something we're asking you to do every day before you go to, before you report to a shift or go to the office or whatever your job is. Whenever, please, no matter what your job, please report what your, uh, the, do this form and report your health uh, so that we can keep uh, in touch with you and know if there's issues. So if you're a direct care person, obviously we wanna know so we can help make sure we protect you and protect your patients. Um, our, uh, the rest of our administrative staff, we want to know so we can be able to know if, if something that you, the work that you're doing might suddenly um, come to an end because you're not feeling well. So we need, we need to be able to have full, full view of how everybody's doing, especially in this virtual world where we're all, um, the administrative teams used to being in the office with each other and now we're not, uh, and, and reaching out to the team in the field, it's everybody's virtual now. So um, this form is super important to help us know uh, what's happening, who's okay, where is everybody, you know, who needs support. So we're asking you, what is your temperature? What time did you take your temperature? If 
you don't have a thermometer, please let um, your fulfillment ambassador know so they can work with our team to figure out how to get you a thermometer. Uh, in the meantime, doesn't mean you can't go to work, means that you still need to do the rest of it. You need to log that you will log that you were unable to take your temperature. So what is your temperature? What time did you take it? Is your temperature greater than 100.4? Cause that's a, that's a special number, anything above 100.4. Um, do you have a cough? Are you experiencing shortness of breath? Have you traveled by air in the last 14 days? Have you traveled by car more than three hours? Have you interacted with anybody who's traveled to an endemic country? And have you had direct exposure with anyone with a confirmed COVID-19 diagnosis in the last 21 days? So those are things we want to screen. Doesn't mean that we are going to say, no, you can't go to work. It means we want to know what you're, we want to, we want to have a deeper conversation with you. This is intended to be a, uh, a flag. So if you, if you answer, you know, answer these questions, especially the, the question about your temperature, um, please call the office and let us know and let us talk to you about it. Um, part of what we are, we know the, D, the Department of Public Health is going to be looking for is uh, in, our, in our response of making sure we're taking care of all of our staff and all of our patients. They want to make sure that we have a record of everybody doing this during this, this time. So thank you for doing it and um, we appreciate it. We also have a separate questionnaire. It's a one-time questionnaire that we sent out. I think most people filled it out. Taylor sent it out. It is, um, it's also part of our emergency preparedness response to the COVID-19. And it's specifically helping us understand any kind of uh, work shortages we might face um, as, as, this, as time goes on. So um, it's asking you if uh, you're, you know, you might not be able to work due to childcare. If you might not be able to work due to having another dependent that you take care of. Um, if, if uh, public transportation were to shut down, whether or not that would affect your ability to go to work. Um, whether or not you have another, you yourself or someone you live with has, um, has some kind of other uh, compromised immune system or other condition that may put you in a higher risk. And we want to talk to you about that and, and, and determine what we can do to make it safe for you to work or um, whether it's safe for you to work. So, so we, we want to we know what that situation is. Um, are you, the other thing is, is are you currently working anywhere else other, other than here at Illume? And, um, and, and what are those places that you're working? So we need to keep a pretty close tab on if um, if there's a great outbreak in another in a facility, we need to quickly be able to know who who's works in those facilities. Reach, we want to reach out to you. We want to make sure you're okay. We want to understand your level of exposure, um, and and then how to deal with it, right? How how we can support you? Do we need to help you get test tested? What what do we need to do um, to support you? Uh, we anticipate a surge in patient needs. Um, certainly, we've already had a surge in patient needs as far as our existing continuous care. They want, many of them want more hours. Some of them want fewer, but many of them want more. We expect um, as our hospitals, is, we're, we're noticing if you look at the data, um, the infection rates are, are moving up the coast. So they're moving up from Westchester into uh, Fairfield County, and they're going to kind of make their way north. And as they do that, I think we're going to start to see our, our hospitals start to become overrun. And um, that, at least that's, that's what they're predicting. I hope perhaps we'll be wrong and everybody sheltering in, sheltering in place will, will uh, prevent that. But, um, but right now, that, that's what they're predicting. And when that happens, we, we expect a surge in, uh, in, the, in the hospitals trying to send people out, oftentimes before they're even ready, truly, but they need to, they need to, you know, we, we have, we have to triage, we have to make do. So, um, so we will be, I would, I would anticipate having more patients come home from the hospital over the coming weeks um, ahead. And then we just want to know as well from this questionnaire, if there's any other reasons why um, childcare, dependent care, transportation, health risks, other reasons why you might in this COVID-19 emergency not be able to work as many hours um, as you currently do. We just need to have a lay of the land so we can plan accordingly and um, make sure our patients are taken care of. 
So I'm having some trouble with my headset here. So I'm going to switch off of it. Because I don't want you to, to lose me. Okay, so moving on then. Okay, so the other things that we, we want to do, that this is the four questions. You've seen this. Uh, we've talked about this. You can all hear me. Um, the four questions are uh, are listed here, and we have sent them out in a, in a mail to all patients. Um, we want you to use these questions, these four questions. We want you to call prior to a shift, and and the reason for that is because you need to know if something has changed in their status. Anybody in the home have, have they, you know, especially have they. Um, do they have a fever? Do they have an infection, a cough, shortness of breath? Do they have any of those things going on for them? Have they been in touch with people in the community that might um, might have uh, COVID-19 or be suspected of COVID-19? Um, so you need to check in with these people every day, right? Because literally every day things are going to change. So you can't ask just once. It's best to call in advance before you get there because then you know if you need to put on different protective equipment, right, to support yourself. So you want to put on that protective equipment outside before you walk in the house. You want to protect yourself before you enter the home. So um, you want to ask these questions to very much to protect yourself um, before you get there and then again when you get there. And it may seem redundant, but trust me, it's not. This is, this is very important for you to, uh, to make sure you have the safety that you need. So if somebody says yes, so have you traveled outside the U.S. to an affected area in the last two weeks? Do you have signs or symptoms of respiratory infections such as fever, cough, shortness of breath, or sore throat? In the last two weeks, have you had contact with someone with a respiratory infection or under investigation for COVID-19? And do you have, do you live in a community where community-based spread of COVID-19 is occurring. More and more, we're gonna have people say yes to that, right? And so um, the, the way to deal with that, if the answer is yes, then you ask the person to put on a mask. You put on a mask if you already don't have one on. Put a mask on your patient, right? And, and then call the office and report whatever yeses there are. Again, it's not, it doesn't mean that you, uh, we can't serve the patient, it doesn't mean that. It means that we just need to know what the situation is so we can make note of it and we can guide you and support you to make sure you're safe. Does anybody have any questions on that? And you can just take yourself off mute if you do. It's super important, these questions you have to ask really every single time you go into a shift. Yeah. Yeah. Who is this? How do you here? I'm sorry. This is I don't, I'm sorry, I didn't know who just talked, but this is Jennifer. I have a question. So we don't have yes. masks and stuff inside our car. How are we, I don't have anything to like down on before I go into anyone's house. That is a great question. Um, and I'm hoping, is Christine, is Christine on the line or Marie who can speak to our plans to get supplies out I'm here. to people? Sorry guys, I just speak to talking and I didn't, um, it's Christine, I'm here. Um, so who am I speaking to? Which, which case do you work, dear? Well, I'm going to be going to CW in Waterbury. Okay. Right now. Um, okay. So what's going to happen is we're going to, we do have some gloves. Um, sorry, gloves mm -hmm. that got sent out. We got some hand sanitizer. I do have some masks that are going to get sent out to the families. Um, what we're going to do is try to distribute them in a way where, um, they're out in the families and we're just basically, you guys would go in and grab one. If you want a mask that you can have for, before you go into the home, um, yeah. I have some time on Wednesday to allow some open, we have some open hours, but I can set up some time where we can allow the nurses to come in and grab a mask for themselves. Would that make you more comfortable? Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I kind of just want stuff before I go into people's houses, just as a precaution for me, because I have my girls that I'm with all the time at home. Okay, perfect. I completely understand. Perfect. Why don't you, I will send out a blast um, to the whole team, uh, so I will set out a time um, on Wednesday, but what will happen is um, I'll talk to my team on how to best do this. I might have uh, window time, and you guys just stay out in your cars, and if 
team member will come out to you and pass you the masks. That's great. Yeah. Okay. So don't want the, I don't want you guys all coming into the office. Um, no. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Close area. So what I can do is mm -hmm. let me work on that with my team and I will send out a text blast and an email blast of hours that you guys can come on Wednesday and I'll have a team member outside who can hand out some masks to the employees. Uh, Jennifer, okay, thanks. Uh, this yeah. is Holly, uh, the case manager for CW. Uh-huh. I had left um, some masks at that house last time I was out there. So um, I think I left four or five. So there should be some there. Um, I had handed them to mom with uh, two boxes of gloves. So there should be some there. Yeah, I know they're there, but I'm talking about before I get in the house, okay. before I even enter into anyone's house. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, my thing is I've been in my house. Like, I haven't been to work, period, at all, anywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I know that I'm okay, and I know my girls are fine, but this is going to be my first time even going into anyone's house in the last, like, mm -hmm. week and a half. Yep. So I don't want to When are you due to go in? Home? When's your next shift, dear? Well, honestly, I'm due Saturday. I'm Saturday and Sunday, but I think I'm going to pick up some shifts on Thursday and Friday. Okay. We will definitely get you, get you a mask before then. So I, will, I promise you I will send out a blast. Um, I'll just connect okay. with a team member um, on my end, and I will identify a time, and then we'll do it to where nurses can pull into the back driveway, and we have an yeah. employee here handing out masks. Hey, Christy. Yeah. Okay. It's it's Marie. Can you hear me? Hi, Marie. <laughs> um, maybe what we could do for the nurses is put a, f a couple in a sandwich bag, and then this way they can just take it and run. You know, that way they don't have to wait for somebody to dole them out and do it ahead of time. Have, you know, several in a sandwich bag, just hand them out. Yeah, but from where? We'll talk about it. We'll get all the, we'll get all the logistics okay. together, and then we'll let them no, know. No, I don't from the office. Them. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll we'll figure it out. All right, guys, I definitely will be in touch. So you just keep an eye out for an email and a text message from me. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, dear. Good, good, good. Okay, great. Um, so, perfect. So the next piece here is to wash your hands every 15 minutes, and this is our one of our policies for the COVID-19 response it is a, it's actually a policy make sure that you are washing your hands um, or sanitizing although washing your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds is is really the recommended um, you can use the hand sanitizer if you must if it's not an option to wash your hands um, but do it every 15 minutes um, to help just make sure we're, you know, any any kind of germs that are around, including COVID-19, uh, are, are not going to survive. The next is to clean and disinfect. This is also part of our policy. This isn't just, and by the way, it's not just the Lume who's doing this. This is across the board. It's what's been recommended by the CDC. It's what's recommended by the DPH. It's what's it's been told to us is what we should put in our policy. So. It is our policy to clean and disinfect your workspace at least every four hours. So um, take the time to wipe, you know, sanitize, wipe things down, um, especially high touch areas every four hours. We, we know now that, that um, COVID-19 on a hard surface can live up to seven to eight hours. Um, so you want to just, you, you really have to be vigilant about it. Um, we ask you to do the same thing in your home, right? Um, your home is your, is, is, you know, is, is, it's your business, but we, we really ask you to do the same in your home. Take the time, you know, have, have some Clorox wipes or some bleach spray or, you know, whatever, whatever your disinfectant spray that you have um, or a solution that you have at home and make sure you're wiping down your kitchen counters, your, your toilet handles, your, um, faucets your uh you know the doorknobs on uh, on the cabinets in your kitchen your, your your microwave handle your you know uh refrigerator handle just like keep it keep it clean you know the more we can disinfect the better you know part of this is too it's we want to we want to keep out all infection because any infection even if it's just the regular cold we don't know, right? We don't know if you have a cold. You don't know if you have a cold. We don't know if the patient has a cold or, or a little, another virus that's, you know, less, less 
less scary. And so we want to do everything to avoid all kinds of, of, uh, of infections at this time uh, because we're going to respond potentially uh, beyond what we need to and potentially have nurses not being able to work or patient. It, we want to keep it, we want to keep it as isolated as possible. So clean and disinfect as much as you can. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little about personal protective equipment. Um, I'm hoping that that uh, Christine and Marie can still be on, on, you know, ready to talk here because I, I want to talk about this with all of you. Um, the ideal, if if we if we could do what we want to do, we would say everybody right now wear masks to every masks, gloves, yellow gowns, and protective eye shield to all your visits. Um, and you know, if we have a con if we have a confirmed case, in, then an N95. Right now, we are limited on supplies, and so Christine and Kelly and Marie have been working on getting more and more supplies. Um, Christine, Marie, you want to speak to the timelines? To which you know, like like um, right now, do they have enough masks that they can everybody use one mask per shift? Should everybody use one mask and keep it? What What are you advising right now, based on our um, on our current level of supplies? I will say um, we, you know, what I have is very scarce. Um, they the issue is is that the mask in particular are um, basically all on back order. I was able to get my hands on a couple of hundred. Um, but what's happening is that a lot, all of these masks are to be shipped from uh, China and they're all waiting. So I think, you know, it would be ideal. I have, at, you know, maybe two masks right now per nurse. I don't know the laws around how we can work that around, Marie, as far as, you know, having them take it with them. And I could put a few extra in the home, but we just can't have a nurse changing them um, three to four times a shift. It, it, it'll, we'll run through very quickly. Um, so Marie, well, what are your I'm, thoughts? I'm, well, what I'm reading and what I'm listening to when I'm on the calls with Yale is that um, the mask can be worn for the entire shift. It, um, and then depending if it's soiled after, which you would be able to see, I just wrote a whole policy on this too. Um, then it would need to be discarded. But the mask can be used up to one day or five times, that one particular patient that you're taking care of. So probably a mask a shift is probably what is sufficient. Yep, good. And so do, you, do we have enough for that right now, Christine? Um, I don't think we do. Um, yeah. Because of the level of cases, um, we have over 51 cases. Um, and some of those cases have each, can have up to five nurses and they have three shifts. Um, I don't think that we do. I think that um, it will require them to reuse their mask. Okay. And what about, um, I know that they've been talking and in, in certain in hospitals down in the city, and I don't know what they said on the call today with uh, Yale. I know they're held in CDC. They're also addressing bandanas. Marie, do you want to speak to that? I I haven't heard that. Um, what I've heard is people making, um, you know, having people mm -hmm. make masks out of different materials. Yeah. I've heard people making masks out of bras. Believe it or not. Um, but I would, that wouldn't surprise me. Um, people yeah. seem yeah. to be protected um, in any way we can. So I would say that, you know, this is something that we'll, we're going to continue to work on day by day. And we're going to keep putting out information to the whole team about what to do. We have looked into having a bunch of masks made. Um, similar to what Marie is talking about, not necessarily out of bras, but um, but out of uh, actually out of cotton material, tea towels apparently are, are sort of the highest efficacy. So we're working on several different fronts. And, um, you know, for now, I think it's use, use one mask for as long as you can. And we will continue to bring in and get more and more as we can. 
Um, any more, anything else you want to say on that, Marie or Christine? Nope, I think I'm good. We're trying to, trying to get as many supplies as we can. We keep um, booking all suppliers, even though they're out of stock um, each week mm -hmm. with um, more and more requests for services, I mean, for stuff. So hopefully in a few weeks, hopefully before that, we'll have everything that we need for all of you. Yeah, yeah. I think we have plenty of gloves, right, Christine? And uh, what about protective eye shields? Does everybody um, have that? No, so um, looking into buying like protective glasses, right now we don't have a lot. They're, they're actually hard to get as well. Um, gloves right now seem to be okay. Um, the providers are not showing a shortage there just yet. Um, but the, the main pieces are the yellow gowns that we're showing a shortage in, um, the mm -hmm. mask, huge shortage, as well as the eyewear. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying mm -hmm. to, you know, look at purchasing even, you know, really affordable, clear glasses, um, yep. just something that they can use uh, to cover them. So we're, I'm researching okay. that as well. Okay. So we're working on it guys and, and uh, day by day we'll continue to send out some updates on what the best practice is but for right now use one mask um, and you know use it as best you can um, any questions on all of that guys okay essential workers so we're all essential workers especially those out of you out in uh, the field direct care so everyone in healthcare is an essential employee. You're allowed to travel out of your home if you're an essential employee going to work. Um, you will receive an official letter today or tomorrow that you need to carry in your car. It's a it's a letter that you know basically is is formatted by the Department of Public Health that says yes I'm an you know I am an essential worker and I work for this company and I'm you know allowed to be out. You'll need to carry that in your car with you. We're also working on getting you signs to put in your car so that you can, you know, be seen as, as a uh, essential worker that's providing health care. Um, so you'll, you'll be hearing from us again today and tomorrow about that. Um, it's hard to read this, sorry, it doesn't come in very well. This is, uh, I'm gonna send this out to all of you. It's a flyer that we've been working on um, and it's recommendations for vulnerable populations, what things you should be doing. Um, we are. We want to encourage our our patients. So this is this has uh, gone out to our uh, to our patients as well. We want to encourage our patients to continue to receive health care at home. Uh, we don't want people to um, have their health care decline, their health decline as a result of not receiving services, and then and then get sick and have to go to the hospital. So we're really encouraging um, people to receive whatever health care they can at home. Um, and then, you know, we're talking about reminding them to clean their hands, washing their hands, using soap and water, avoiding touching their eyes, nose, and mouth. Um, everyday precautions, eliminate contact with sick people, avoid high touch services, uh, and then touching your, your face, um, no handshaking, that kind of thing. Staying at home, period, right now, right? Stay home if you're sick, stay home, period. Just as um, you know, we all we all need to be home right now, except for when we're going out to work or getting a, a little exercise or taking a walk in the snow later. Um, we wanna we wanna be at home. Um, limit exposure to to any group of people, not small or large. You want we want to make sure we're stocked up on supplies. This is important with your patients to make sure if you notice if they're if they're low on supplies and let the ambassador know if they if you're experiencing, you know, some kind of, it could be any kind of shortage that, that you're concerned about for the family from, from medical supplies, uh, medications to groceries, um, you know, cleaning and disinfecting products. Please let us know if there's a need in, your, in the house that you're serving uh, so we can work on it. Of course, everybody knows about social distancing now. Uh, I feel like when I talked about this before, I, I felt embarrassed asking you all about it. Now we all know six foot distance between each other, at least. Um, cleaning and disinfecting and covering costs and diseases, 
do, do the do the arm thing. Um, we want to have, uh, we, we mentioned before, we want to have limited physical contact with other employees, which is why Christine was talking about, um, we don't want everybody to just come into the office and have a line of view waiting for, for gloves or a line of view waiting for masks, because then you're all standing next to each other and if one of you is infected, then now all of you are infected. So we are, we've done, for, for really, I guess for the last week now, we've been working on getting all of our administrative team separated, all of our case managers separated. Uh, we hope that you and other members of the team, um, the other, if you're working on a, on a particular patient uh, care team, that you certainly, do, please don't interact with any other nurses on, uh, you know, just don't interact with any other nurses, quite full stop. We don't, we don't want anybody contaminating another nurse at this point or a healthcare provider. Um, so, we, so if you do need to come into the office, as, as Christine described, we will, we'll, we'll set up a system for you to all sort of park your cars and indicate to us that you need something and, and we'll come to you versus um, you all coming in. Um, to just please, you know, this, this also applies to every other kind of redundancy. I wanted to I talk to Christine over the weekend to make sure that we don't have all the fulfillment team together or um, the finance team together because then if one of you goes down, then all of you go down. So we are operating with limited office hours. The administrative team is working virtually. Um, I know this week there are some times that uh, Christine has put in place 11 to 1 on Monday and Wednesday. Uh, but please uh, reach out to your ambassador if um, you, you, your needs are beyond that. And, um, and she'll, Christine will also communicate with the team on how best to, to come in to get supplies. So, you know, what we can expect. Obviously, we've got all of our schools are closed. Events are closed. Um, you know, we're going to see areas of breakout uh, and subsequent quarantine, um, you know, Companies across the board are all working virtually to the extent that they can. Um, we expect hospitals to be over capacity. Um, you know, we, we know you have uh, more and more, um, more uh, health care professionals who, you know, you're all going to have challenges that you're going to face. So we want to be a part of the solution with you. We want to know what your, your needs are. It's why we have um, the, the questionnaires. It's why we, we want to know how your health is, how, you know, what your needs are in terms of working. Um, we are grateful that you are willing to serve, and um, we hope that you will let us know how we can continue to make it really feel safe for you to serve. So no traveling, virtual meetings, no crowds. No handshaking, handle food carefully, uh, you know, really only, only interact with the people in your house and your patients. Um, six foot limit, cleaning and disinfecting, you know, uh, this is all this is all stuff that we've talked about, but it, it's really important to, to make sure everybody's following these rules. Um, we have communicated with all the families at this point. Uh, we sent out information to our families, educating them on what COVID-19 is. Um, helping them start to prepare, hopefully be prepared now, uh, have their household put together and supplies. Um, and we're really asking them to limit their exposure to COVID-19. Again, thinking about each household and what is the individualized emergency plan for each household. Please let your case, your case managers are working on that. That's something they're writing and working on, but they need your contact, your um, your input on this. Like, what are your concerns about each patient and family? What do you think their exposure risks are? Is it a particular person in the house that, you know, is working, still working somewhere where there's a lot of, um, lot of people? Is there, is there a, an absence of, of some material or supply? Uh, please reach out to your case managers and give them feedback on, you know, on your patient. What are you worried about? What would be the, 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 the biggest possible exposure risks for them? And you don't need to necessarily know how to solve it. If you have ideas for how to solve it, please let us know. Um, but also just, you know, knowing what the issues are that you see would be very helpful. We've asked our patients to stay home. We've asked people living in their homes to, 
to stay home and to limit exposure uh, going, you know, of, of being with other people. Um, we've asked them to elevate their infection control, but they're going to do what they're going to do, right? So, so please, again, let us know if there's, if there's issues and please use the four questions at every visit. Again, it's not a time to panic. It's a time to be clear, directive, and take these very specific actions. It's our, it's our time to support our community, our, really our country. Um, it really is. It's, a, it's an important time for us all to rise above and to know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. We can get through this. Um, we, we know that this is something we can get through. We just have to practice what we've discussed. Um, so for us to be healthy, we must stay at home, no visitors, avoid contact with people, infection control, and communicate right? Be in touch with us. Let us know how we can be supportive. And now I just open it up to any questions you might have. Uh, take yourself off mute and uh, let us know who you are and what your question is. All right. I don't hear any questions. Marie, do you have anything you would like to add to all of this? Not at this time. You covered everything beautifully. Thank you. Well, thank you, Marie. I know everybody's been working nine day to try to, to try to think of everything, and it's it's hard because I'm sure we we haven't. <laughs> but we are here to support you, um, and we want to know how how you know how we can do better if we're we're missing something. Uh, we're working on supplies. We'll be in touch with you daily on on our update with that and. Um, Please give us any input on how to support your families as well as you and your family. All right, Coco? guys. Thanks for Coco, everything. I'm yeah. Coco. I'm sorry. This is Jennifer yeah. Coleman. I just, I'm not sure how many nurses are on. I just wanted to address payroll um, and just yeah. reassure everybody that payroll is Please. running as it normally does. We do have a handful of employees. I believe there were seven last week who are still on paper checks. And while we still can get them their paychecks, they are being mailed out on Fridays as, as normal. We would like to encourage those employees to move to direct deposit just to keep them a little bit safer and away from banks um, if they have to do that yep. and also just to expedite the, the funds available to them. So that, um, that information is gonna be coming out. And if anybody has any questions, please reach out. Uh, Jennifer, I have a Great. question. Um, and I might have just jumped in on this after, so I apologize. Is ADP doing the debit card yet? Mm, I haven't heard anything about that. I saw something come through where they have an option. I don't know if it's rolled out just yet, where if the employee doesn't want the money going to a bank account, they can have the option of a debit card through ADP. Can you check on that in case that's an issue? Absolutely. Thank you, because that might be an option for some of the ones. Instead of it going to their bank account, they can have it go to this debit card that ADP will send them. Got it. I'll look into that okay. and get that information out as well. Thank you, Thank dear. You, okay. Any other comments or questions? All right. Well, thank you all for being here. I'm so happy to get to connect with all of you. I, there's a lot of you on the line today, which, I, which I'm grateful for. Um, and uh, look forward to being in touch again with you soon. Go make the world a better place. Bye-bye.